for athletes. Speed kills. In sports like football, basketball, soccer, the faster you are, the more you're going to dominate. But in order to increase your speed, you need to be strong. You need speed strength. And we're gonna show you four exercises that you can use to increase your speed and your strength, and we're gonna start right now. Let's begin with a very speed strength oriented exercise, the pad bench. And I know what you're thinking. You're going, Dean, I thought we were talking about speed strength. Why are we discussing an upper body movement? Remember, speed strength is the ability to transmit and absorb forces rapidly. And one thing that pad benching does is exactly that. It helps you transmit force rapidly and absorb force as fast as possible. But the first thing that you need is a heavy duty pad. And fortunately, we've got our pad available at garagestrength.com. And the pad allows for that heightened capability, that increase in the stretch shortening cycle, which in turn leads to greater motor unit recruitment. And one quick aside here, Charlie Francis, world renowned sprint coach, sprint coach for Ben Johnson. So let's hear all the comments down below about PEDs. One thing that they did in their training was they actually bench press because Charlie Francis wanted to focus on the global recruitment. He used a general strength exercise like the bench press to actually teach Ben's nervous system to fire as rapidly as possible. So that's one other aspect that people forget is that your legs can get tired from quite a bit of volume of speed strength training. So you can still help train your neural drive by doing something like the pad bench. So some unique things that you can do with a pad bench is that you can build up to sometimes the absolute maximum of an athlete's traditional bench press and do something really, really crazy. So 100% for like a set of three or four to really try and train more on the strength curve of the speed strength spectrum. Now, if you're going into a peak and you need more of that neural drive, you need more of that rapid acceleration or that rapid absorption into transmission into that extension here, you can go a little bit lighter. So you can drop down to like 75% of their max and move it really, really quickly. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna put this right on our chest, okay, here. Andrew's gonna give me a sweet spot. One, two, three, here, I'm gonna go down, and I can go control. So, moving it that quickly, okay, it's a faster eccentric, which now my mind is like, okay, we gotta handle this, we have this rapid stretch shortening cycle, and then a quick turnaround. So you can do this a bunch of different ways, and this will in turn lead to better speed strength. Now we've got to get into some of those finer details, and we're going to discuss that a little bit further right now. So having established that the ability to express speed strength comes down to transmitting and absorbing force very, very rapidly, we also have to look at there's a layer of resistance as far as speed is concerned. And that's gonna take us into the next big factor that we can do things like plyometrics that are gonna help us use that rapid rate of coordination. That rapid rate of resistance can now be dealt with extremely rapidly. So one of the things around plyometrics is that oftentimes they transmit force almost too fast. And that isn't a bad thing when we're looking at developing athleticism. We're looking at something like, we're just using our body weight and gravity to make us more explosive, but that's not necessarily what we need to be explosive and strong, AKA have that speed strength. And that's where some unique aspects of absolute strength come into play. Now, a lot of you might be sitting there thinking, well, absolute strength, like power lifters are phenomenal absolute strength, but they have almost zero speed strength. But if we get unique and bring in a method like simple contrast methods, now we can start to use things a little bit more effectively. So let's take something like the incline bench. Let's execute an incline bench and do a set of three to four reps around 80 to 90% of our max. So if we go in on the incline bench and we have 83% of our max and we hit that for a triple, and then we rest for two minutes, the next thing that we can do to help develop that speed strength is to do something like explosive push-ups. This would be the contrast to that absolute strength movement. So we're using that high speed exercise in conjunction with that heavier absolute strength movement. So absolute strength exercises are fantastic to use, especially in a dynamic manner. We can use absolute strength exercises with contrast methods 
But using them through dynamic efforts, we can start to do things like measure velocity. And I'm gonna share a couple key hacks here. One, we can actually have a velocity-based tracker. So we can actually look at this and say, if we're doing an absolute strength movement, can we move that bar at 0.95 meters per second all the way up to like two plus meters per second? Another thing that we can do is use a really cool trick that I'm gonna show you at the end of this segment. So we're gonna use a single leg squat, and I'm gonna demonstrate what we do here at Garage Strength to focus on that speed strength. Now, we're gonna get into position, and this is something that we use inside of our app, Peak Strength. I know you guys thought I was gonna sell you on the single leg roller, which is also available at garagestrength.com, but instead I think all of you guys need to start cultivating your power. You need to start getting inside of Peak Strength, executing that four for four on a weekly basis so that you can become a champion. So if we get into this position here, okay, this is what a normal single leg squat might look like, right? Here, one more. Boom, that's a typical set. And we can just try and increase load over and over and over again till we get to the point of using as heavy weight as possible. And we might be moving at like 0.4 meters per second, right? Here. Oh, one more. Now, the hack that I would use is that I wanna get something done as quickly as possible. So when we use absolute strength exercises in a dynamic fashion, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna do it either unbroken or timed. And the time part was the one I was talking about earlier, but unbroken would look like this. Okay, so we wanna do that as fast as possible. Get those reps done as quickly as possible. Now, timed might look like here, I'm set, and you have an auditory command or a visual command, so your coach gets set, they would actually move something and then start a timer. So let's say I'm here. And I'm doing that as quickly as possible and I'm timed. So the load on the bar matters because then what we can do is week over week, I can look at this and say, okay, I had, you know, in this case, 60 kilos on the bar. I executed 60 kilos on my right leg in 3.7 seconds. I don't know what the time was. On my left leg, it was 3.2. We can start to see the differential and then we can start to compare that to when we're sprinting or when we're doing bounds, when we're doing jumps, anything along those lines. Okay, and if we're doing like five sets of three unbroken or five sets of three timed, we're gonna do this at specific weights and slowly build up. And what ends up happening is that we do something dynamic with that absolute strength exercise. And what's interesting is that if we do this, let's say over eight weeks, and I start at 60 kilos and I move it at 3.7 seconds, if I can get to the point where week eight, I'm at 80 kilos or 90 kilos and I'm still moving at 3.7 seconds, now I've developed that speed strength. So if we're using these absolute strength movements, okay, you can use it with the contrast method and you can also use it with the timed or unbroken sets. That's gonna transfer to speed strength really, really well. So when we're talking about speed strength, or maybe in the future, later on in this video, we're gonna provide a better term for speed strength. One thing that we have to look at is what can develop speed and what tends to lead to not only moving weight fast and absorbing weight fast, but also leading to locomotive speed, meaning running, shuttle runs, sprinting laterally, sprinting backwards. And that next exercise that really helps with locomotion is going to be a sled sprint. Now, one thing that I wanna do here is I think it's good to show simple progressions, okay? And you're gonna get a sweet progression later on in the video based off of a little reflexive series that we're gonna release. But first, let's get into something simple like this. Let's buckle up. First, I wanna do a little bit of a sled march, okay? Shout out to Ferris Khan. So if I've got a little bit more weight on the sled, I've got 70 pounds, I weigh 220, so that's gonna be, what, about 33% of my body weight. So the first thing that we can do is just simple sled march here, okay? Nice and easy, and I know this is not going to be speed strength. One thing that we can do, though, is that we wanna start to warm up. We wanna start to loosen up and feel those positions that we wanna hit. So let's say we do two times through, just boom, 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 boom. Okay, starting to feel driving from the hamstrings, driving from the glutes, extending even from the quads there, okay? So that's gonna help us warm up. I will say this, the turf's a little bit slick because it just snowed here last night. So the next thing that we can do, as we're starting to work on that speed strength, it's gonna transfer really well to field sports, even court sports like basketball. 
or transferring over into football, lacrosse. And if we're even looking at somebody who's like a wrestler, we could probably put a little bit more weight to get a little bit more of that forward lean. So now we can get more into that locomotive aspect here. Boom, 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 boom. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Okay, 10 sets of two sled sprints here that are 20 yards, two minutes rest, okay? So that's something that you can do to help improve that speed strength. And if you can put more force into the ground, you're gonna get more ground reaction forces back, which in turn is gonna help you with that speed and strength. Here. And if you don't have access to a sled, get onto a hill. And that is also another aspect that's gonna help with that speed strength, which in turn will carry over really well to that locomotive speed that's gonna help you run harder. So besides sprinting with a sled, or using contrast methods with plyometric exercises, or even using a speed enhancing tool like hitting a pad bench, another thing that we can use is using reflexive based exercises. And all of these different strategies are used inside of our programming here at Garage Strength, and you can have direct access to that programming by downloading our app, Peak Strength. With over 700 different exercises, our programming is guaranteed to deliver that speed strength that you need to dominate all of your athletic opponents. And you can start these programs for free by heading over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, where we wanna give you five free workouts to start to develop that speed strength. Now, reflexive exercises can help you move weight very, very quickly. And there's something that we program typically on an impulse day, sometimes also on athlete day. And we're gonna show you using the 5S protocol how you can develop this series. Now, we're gonna show you the Lynch series, which we've demonstrated in past speed videos, but we're gonna show you specifically using this plate how you can build into this series. So first, we're gonna start with the curtsy squats. So we're gonna place our left foot here, okay? And I'm gonna do a curtsy squat down, Oh, come back up here, down, come back up. Now watch my right foot is not hitting the ground. Down, come back up, okay? So we're hitting this. Let's say we just do this for four reps, okay? So four reps, curtsy squat, place your foot here. You wanna cross that back knee almost past your heel here and then come back up. So that's the first step in the Lynch series. Now the next step is gonna be a curtsy squat to jump. So this is gonna be a little bit more advanced. So make sure that you or your athletes are executing that curtsy squat pretty well. So this one would be here, down. I'm gonna drop this and jump, okay? Now notice, I'm going pretty slow. I'm just working through this. This is gonna trigger my nervous system on the eccentric to start to recruit very, very well. And then when we drop this, I'm gonna be a little bit lighter, but my body thinks I still weigh 10 kilos heavier and I'm gonna jump faster here. Come down, boom, drop, boom, okay? Nice and slow, so that's the second step. Curtsy squat with the weight into a jump. Now, the next factor is that we're gonna go into a jump to curtsy squat. So we're just going into that deceleration now. We're gonna go here, boom, down, come back up, okay? Back to here, boom, down, come back up. So the next one's gonna be a jump to the curtsy squat, to a little jump in place. So I'm gonna go here, boom, boom, drop, just go in place, okay? So I'm gonna go here, boom, 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 okay? So we're adding that jump, we're doing the curtsy squat, and then finally, I'm gonna show you that last step. Now I'm gonna go into the Lynch series with weight, which we have never demonstrated on YouTube or anywhere for that matter. Boom, 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 okay? A little quicker, and you can see as you work through this, you get smoother, you get smoother, you get smoother. Think about an athlete executing that four for four. They're showing up four days a week for four years. The first time they do this, they're gonna look like trash. By the 30th time that they're doing this, they're gonna look freaking smooth. And that's how you transfer that speed strength that you're developing in the weight room out onto the field. So here, boom, boom, boom. I do five sets of jumps, four reps on the left side, four reps on the right side. This is more about impulse. That's something that we should be discussing here is that it's not speed strength, it's impulse. It's how much force in a designated period of time can we produce. That's impulse and that's what we have to factor in. And if you guys like that, you can subscribe to all of our podcast channels and our other channel, Peak Strength, where you can learn more about impulse. So I'm here, boom, boom, boom. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.